So, uh, hello there, I'm uh, Charlie Woods, and welcome to the first of the EDAS COVID casts. Uh, I'm joined today by Stuart Black, who's uh, Highlands Islands Enterprises Area Manager for Murray. Stuart, you've been in the thick of responding to the COVID crisis. So what, what role have you been playing in this? Yeah, I've been involved um, really from the uh, middle of March, um, chairing a twice weekly meeting to start with of the Murray Business Resilience Forum, which I was asked to set up by Richard Lockhead, who's the local MSP and also the Scottish Government Minister for Higher and Further Education. So that's been uh, meeting pretty regularly. We've probably had 15 or 16 meetings now, and it also includes key business organisations within Murray, the Chamber of Commerce, the Tourism Bid, um, Elgin Bid, who deal with the, the town centre in Elgin, um, also the Federation of Small Businesses have been involved, Scottish Council of Development and Industry. Um, Murray Council has been a key player as well, and I've been chairing it jointly with one of their senior officers. The council leader has been on the call too, along with Douglas Ross, who was the Under Secretary of State for Scotland and then resigned over the Dominic Cummings affair. So it's mm. been a very interesting process. The meetings have largely discussed um, the support available for businesses within Murray. And then laterally, we've moved on to looking ahead to opportunities and, and challenges that are facing businesses. So that's been key. Right. And, and, what, and what are the key things that you've learned so far? And perhaps, you know, what surprised you most? We've also been involved laterally over the past six weeks in administering some of the government funding for uh, businesses to be supported through the, the COVID crisis, the Pivotal Enterprise Fund in particular, and also the hardship fund for tourism, hospitality and creative industries. What, what's been interesting there is just the breadth of companies that have been looking for assistance. There's clearly a very severe economic crisis happening at, at the current time. Lots of businesses are worried about cash flow. Interestingly, in most other recessions, there's been some sort of a, a bright spot. So in the financial crash, where, where lots of things stopped happening, there was still um, potential to look at markets in the Far East, for example, which were less affected by the financial crash. And Murray's quite an export-oriented economy. A lot of whiskey and food and drink producers like Baxter's and Walker's, Johnson's of Elgin, who are Scotland's biggest cashmere producer. So it's quite an export-focused economy. And at the moment, the, the companies are saying, well, this is a global crisis. Although markets have started to come back in places like the Far East, there isn't really anywhere that's a bright spot. It's affected the whole global economy and affected every sector. Because again, back in the financial crash, there were, there were sectors that were able to maintain spending and, and increase spending, and particularly things like affordable housing, councils up, up their capital spend. But everybody's under pressure at the same time. All markets are affected. And you can, you can see that in the figures where we've seen recently 20% fall in, in UK GDP, the biggest ever mm -hmm. uh, fall recorded. So it has been a really significant crisis. Um, and it's been a challenge because from the outset, we, we've had a lot of companies approaching for assistance in sectors that we haven't really looked at before in, in economic development. Um, a lot of uh, service related construction companies as well that generally economic development agencies don't work with. There's been huge pressure on staff to turn around applications quickly to get information and um, communication out to businesses. So that's put people under a fair bit of pressure, working a, a lot of um, into evenings and over weekends we've been meeting. Pretty much every day we had a, an investment committee meeting, which discussed between 30 and 40 investment cases and very challenging decision making having to be done quickly. But it's really shown how colleagues can step up to the mark and although we haven't been able to make um, everyone happy in terms of these grant decisions, I think we've been able to assist a, a fairly significant proportion of the businesses who come forward. Right. So you've been working hard to hope business, help businesses cope with the current situation they find. Have you, have you had any opportunities to lift your head above the parapet a wee bit to look towards the future and begin to think about planning for recovery? Yeah, I think one of the things that's happened and it's evidenced uh, by what we're doing today is the huge shift towards digital that's, that's really happened. I, I think we've had about five years change in the, in the space of the last three months. We, we, used, we were used to working digitally and working remotely in, in Highlands and Islands. 
we would often ask colleagues in the central belt if we could do meetings on things like um, Skype and, and quite often we were told no you must be here you must be down in Edinburgh Glasgow for nine o'clock in the morning forgetting it took uh, three hours to get there from from Inverness so we we've made these changes and I think they've happened in the in the central belt probably faster than people would realize but suddenly what everyone wants to do is get online in terms of their business so we probably had a, a slower take up in in Scotland of people trading online and e-commerce and that's rapidly accelerated as I say, I think we've had several years of change in, in three months. Everybody wants to be on e-commerce. Everyone real, realizes how important digital connectivity is. And that's something that we've been pursuing for, for many years in Highlands and Islands. And there is a big digital divide because there still are communities and individuals who can't connect to super fast or digital uh, broadband and are really suffering. And, and you can see that in people homeschooling, uh, colleagues of mine who are looking after youngsters when they when they're all online the broadband speed f suffers they can't connect as quickly and that's a real frustration for individuals for communities but also for businesses some of the businesses we've been dealing with um, in our investment committee are very out of the way hotels which don't have the same sort of digital and broadband access that we're now increasingly taking for granted so it does highlight the importance of digital I think other things that are being highlighted at the moment, maybe in a more positive way, is people's quality of life. Um, people are looking for a way they can balance home and work. And rural locations actually provide a, a really attractive uh, proposition in, in this environment because you can connect digitally. I mean, I, I'm sitting here today on, on Speyside. Um, I start my morning by going for a walk with the dogs down by the river. I come back, I work in the office. I no longer spend an hour or so a day commuting into, into an office. I can achieve an awful lot of things. There are things I miss, and I'm sure everybody's missing face-to-face -face contact um, with family and friends, but also work colleagues. And, but there is an awful lot that can be done remotely, and we have spent an awful lot of time um, and resources in a very inefficient way, traveling around, polluting the planet. Um, and we're, we're, we are looking at a greener, zero, net zero future, or that's what we're striving. And actually this process of home working for many people has helped reduce the, the stresses and strains of commuting, shown how important a high quality of life is. And also, I think made us reconnect in, in some ways. I mean, even in cities, people are cycling a lot more, they're walking a lot more. I think that's a really good thing and needs to be developed into the future, albeit we do still need connectivity and that, that's a concern because we're seeing, for example, at Inverness Airport, really hardly any flights at all. Now, how does business connect internationally? There still is a lot of requirement for face-to-face, for -face, particularly export-oriented businesses like, like the ones in Murray. So digital is important, quality of life is important. And, and the third factor, I think, is the ability um, to retain and attract uh, young people in, in rural areas. I think that if you can work in the way that we're working increasingly, then where you live, you can live where you want rather than where you have to live. So jobs could, could come to more rural communities in a way that hasn't happened before. 10, 15 years ago, Highlands and Islands Enterprise was working on remote call centers. That was where people could work from their home but be digitally connected. And that is something that offers good opportunity in future. So I, I think that you know, the longer term, there are trends that will help Scotland because it is seen as a place with a very attractive high quality of life where you can get a good education. And again, UHI, University of Highlands and Islands has been doing this for many years. Mm -hmm. So trends are, are, are favoring, I think, Scotland and favoring some rural parts of Scotland in a way that hasn't been the case before. Right. So, I mean, a lot of short-term challenges, obviously, but a number of uh, opportunities there looking a little further to the future. Just, I mean, just in conclusion, uh, as, you, as you help companies uh, work their way towards this future, what sort of thing could really help you in this role? I think one of the things that this highlights is the need for, for training and for um, training in, for, for people in my sorts of jobs around digital and, and how new things will work. Um, and how markets will work going forward. Um, I think also businesses learn from each other and I think sharing good practice is, is really important at the current time. So there are some really great exemplar companies in Murray that export all over the world 
it would be great if we could get them mentoring some of the smaller businesses around the area and helping them to, to grow. And I, and I think a third factor is we do always have to be thinking about the, the medium to longer term, what will make our economy successful and attractive. We're working on a growth deal at the moment for Murray and there are growth deals right across Scotland. And I think they need to be increasingly focused on what are the fundamentals that will make these economies successful in future. But, you know, I always want to finish on an optimistic note. And I, I do think that the, the current crisis, it does show how important things like local food, provenance of, of local products, um, the quality of life we have in Scotland. Visitors want to come to Scotland. People want to live in Scotland. And that's because it's, it's an attractive place to be. And it's a place that's, that's forward looking and digitally connected. And, you know, that's why I'm optimistic about the future. So it is a really difficult time at the moment. We've got strong, resilient businesses in Murray. Many of them are family owned. They're not going to move anywhere. They're hugely committed to here. And again, I think that's something that Scotland as a whole benefits from. So it is a really challenging time at the moment. It's tough for, for businesses. Um, I, I know that businesses are really struggling and they want the public sector to help. We're trying our best to help. The reality is that the resources are not, are not um, infinite. So we have tough choices to make. Um, but I hope that businesses and communities realise that public sector is really here to try and support what they're doing in these really difficult times. Great. Well, Stuart, thanks for taking the time to uh, talk to me today and uh, all the best in your important work going forward. Thank you. Thank you.